Good afternoon. I'm Pri, and we are Prima Donna. Meet Kendall. Kendall's 13 years old. She adores Taylor Swift. She sends around 30 snaps a day. And Kendall loves art. In fact, Kendall loves nail art. Nail art for Kendall is a great way for her to creatively express herself, change her look daily, and feel pretty. But for Kendall and her girlfriends, getting a customized instant manicure is a hassle. Going to a nail salon is extremely inconvenient. It's also pretty pricey. And there's a limited art selection. And for those of you in the audience that have never painted your nails, imagine writing with your bad hands. Now imagine painting with your non-dominant hands. It's not going to look very good. We looked for a better solution for Kendall and our prima donnas. We couldn't find it, so we invented it. We invented the Nailbot. The Nailbot prints custom instant nail art directly onto your fingernail using your smartphone. And this is how it works. I'm joined today by my co-founder, Casey Schultz. Casey has a robotics background from Carnegie Mellon. She's built quadcopters, fluid dispensing robots, working at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, Tech Shop, and NASA. Together, we invented and built the Nailbot. Please switch to the live handheld camera. First, make sure your nails are prepped. We recommend using a white base coat and a pre-print coat that will come in the kit. Casey previously painted her nails. Now let's choose an image from our camera roll, pardon, from our gallery. Every girl loves a little bit of bling. I love diamonds, so let's choose that, that diamond emoji right there on the screen. And we're gonna click next and we're gonna hit print. And in about five seconds, that image is going to print directly on Casey's fingernail. We are utilizing Hewlett Packard thermal inkjet technology in our early nailbot solutions and are proud to do so. The formulations in the cartridge will be safe for cosmetic use when we ship the nailbot commercially. We also, rec it's printing in just a, a few seconds. There you go, there is the, the awesome bling, that diamond emoji. We've got a little bit more time, so let's print, in the spirit of being a TechCrunch Battlefield finalist, let's print the TechCrunch logo. We're gonna go to, yes, and we're gonna go to the licensed art gallery section where we've got some, some other images. And again, we're gonna print directly onto Casey's fingernail in less than five seconds. The resolution of these images is between 300 and 1200 DPI, depending upon the nail bot settings. This art is also easily removed with traditional nail polish remover and can last the lifetime of your nail polish underneath, so likely a few days. We also recommend putting a top coat on. There you go, there's the TechCrunch nice. logo. Pretty awesome, right? Fantastic, and Casey's going to actually do a top coat just to seal in that image as well. marketplace. So whether you want Elsa or the 49ers or the Warriors or even Starry Night on your nails, we're creating an art marketplace for those to creatively express themselves with applications well beyond fingernail printing and painting. But we're starting with a demographic that will love us the most, and those are our tween and teen prima donnas. They are 21 million girls strong in the United States. 92% of which decorate their nails regularly, and 14% of which decorate their nails daily. They're our power users. And these girls have told us, we want the product right away, but we've said hardware takes some time to ship. So we developed an augmented reality app where they can use the back-facing camera on their smartphone and superimpose images of their best friends, emojis, anything else from our app directly onto their fingernail, and then share instantly with their social networks or within the Prima Donna, Net Prima Donna Network, creating our viral social community early in this fall. And when I talk about community, that's really what's powering Prima Donna. It's our girls. And this is where my background comes in. I have an MBA from U Chicago. I spent a number of years since 2009 working in hardware. But I started my career out working in politics, building movements and campaigns from ground up. And so we've partnered with organizations like Girl Scouts of New Mexico Trails and ID Tech not just to get out the nail bot, to, to teach girls how we went from idea to prototype, to show them how to digitally design their own nail bot art, and to even build one of our first touchscreen printers using Arduino. So today, we have a prototype and a product that's meant for our tween and teen prima donnas. 
But over the past two and a half years, we have invented and engineered prototypes for every woman in the family, including a nail bot that will print, or including a nail bot that does more advanced nail art features, and even a nail bot that will automate the po professional polish change. Because the nail services and the nail care industry is $15 billion globally, and prima donna is well situated and positioned to be a category leader in this space. So join us on our journey. Go to www.thenailbot.com, sign up for our crowdfunding updates. Thank you for your time. We've got 26 seconds left. All right, we're going to do another image. <laughs> I maximize the time here. We're going to print an image of Casey's dog. Please switch back to live handheld camera. Thanks. Straight from her camera roll. She's going to crop that image. The dog is Callie, super cute. Fingers in the cradle, and it's just pressed print. I'll take Q&A, but it should be printing any second now. Awesome. All right, give it up. Great demo. <laughs> Judges, who wants to get their fingers uh, painted? <laughs> yeah, we got a volunteer. <laughs> I have nothing on my, yeah, I don't have polish on. I was hoping roll off my raise hand too. But uh, you guys, let's start with the questions. Who's got questions? Yep. Go ahead. <clears throat> very nicely done. I think it's a very innovative service and it's a wonderful way for people to um, express themselves. One of the questions I had was whether you, you want to embrace the user generated content element. I realize that creates greater self expression because you can get your personal images, but I wonder whether that limits your monetization and whether it gets you into trouble with copyright owners when you know, people just upload their own image of Elsa and they don't buy it from the store? It's a great question. Uh, it's something that we've thought about a lot as we built this company. So one of the things that we're going to do before we release the app for printing with the Nailbot is make sure that we do have some kind of filtering um, and image recognition software in place within our app so that we can filter enough to where we can recognize copyrighted and licensed images. Um, it is a problem, and we recognize that we have to find a solution very early on. Mm -hmm. Other companies also face this challenge in this space. And, and what's the cost per unit? Sure, the cost for the kit, mm -hmm. comes in a kit, is $199. No, what's your, uh, your cost? Our cost. So it's in typical in line with consumer hardware companies, so around 30% margin. Got it. Yeah. I have a question about the initial target demographic of teens, right? Teens are great because they're communicating with each other, so hopefully once you get little fires started regionally or geographically, you can have things spread without a lot of marketing costs. But teens also can be very faddish where they'll be really into Rainbow Loom for one year or two years, and then it's kind of over, or they're really into something. How do you avoid it being an awesome fad for 2016 or 2017 and then being over? Uh, good question. Um, so one of the fantastic elements of our mobile experience is that you can switch your art daily. You can switch your art hourly, in fact, every, second, you know, every couple of seconds if you want. And so we believe that if we give, them, give girls a great mobile experience, different things that are trending every week, and curate that content for them, it's you know, if an art is a fad for a week, there's a new image, a new logo, a new, you know, Chevron Manny that they'll want. And so we can work with that fickleness, if you will, to actually create something that's customized and instant just for them that can change every week with their style. Okay. In, terms, in terms of the product roadmap, Instagram just launched kind of the full screen for portrait and landscape. Is there a way in which you can actually do the entire nail rather than just a square? Or how far off is that? Yep. Does you want to take that one? Sure, yeah. So we're using uh, right now just the small images, um, but we have done initial prototyping to cover the full nail. In order to do that well and accurately, we need to finalize our machine vision algorithms. So we have initial algorithms to define the nail, which is being used in the augmented reality app. We're doing that real time, live. So we'll take those applications and put that into the final version. Um, so that we can define where is the nail, how big is it, what's the shape, and then we can go from edge to edge, bottom to top. Is that intended for this actual launch or in next iterations? So we have several different prototypes of different products, um, and that what Casey is describing is in another version. Okay. Yeah. What's your distribution strategy? Is it direct to consumers? Is it to salons? Um, I mean, how are you planning on distributing your product? Sure. We are launching on Indiegogo in about six weeks for a pre-order campaign for our first Nailbot. 
And really, it's a direct-to-consumer approach, working with social purpose partners as well. So it's a little bit non-traditional in the sense that I'm not going to traditional beauty retailer, but instead working with organizations that already have an online and offline presence to reach these girls. Um, and that's really where a little bit more of my grassroots background comes in, is that we've learned if girls want to relate to us, they want to see this device being used. And we, what we want to do is use our first 1,000 units. So you know, it's great to have two prototypes, and then you got 500, and then you got 1,000. And so we want to use those early units to get them in the hands of influencers and social partners for them to, for girls to really get access to those units. And a 200 price point is something parents are comfortable with to buy this nail board for their kids? So with a 200, for the $199 price point, we believe we can reduce that in half in less than three years. That said, there are other revenue streams that we can look at once the app gets a little sticky. So obviously, we don't want to you know, charge a huge premium on subscription content right away in order to get some traction. We can absolutely reduce the price point if we know, if we have some data and analytics on how frequently users are downloading art, what they're streaming, you know, in tracking that kind of metrics. But initially, we are a lean startup. We have to make sure that we at least hit consumer hardware margins. So, one last question related to distribution. Have you ever thought about putting it in public spaces like malls and like, you know, having it more like a slot machine where I can drop in a few quarters and then go and get <laughs> nail art done? Yeah, so I was having a little bit of trouble hearing, but it, are you referring to kiosks? Yeah, in some it, sense. Yeah. So. You know, I'm a student of history, actually, um, I, and we looked very broadly at the nail printer history, the history of nail printers. And kiosks have been done before, but the user experience is not great. They're very large, they're industrial machines, and this is meant to be an at-home device for instant customization. I think malls and schools and after-school programs are great for girls to get learning and get, get their hands on the device. But the smartphone as the controller is really the key to our product and our experience. And we really take that away. You take away the magic. Our girls are social, they're mobile, and they want it at home. Is there, is there a patent pendant on it? Absolutely. So I started working on the Nailbot product family. I never thought this was my, my plan in life to build a Nailbot, mm -hmm. but apparently it is. Um, in 2013, our utility filings on the entire product family, um, both design, utility, date back to 2013, so yes. Got it. And is there a competitive product out there right now? There's not a competitive product that can offer that kind of instant gratification. Um, but what I would say is, you know, you can go and buy a bottle of nail polish, or you can go and get a nail wrap. And, you know, those are comparable in terms of you're getting something on your fingernail, but you're not going to get a picture of your dog instantly. You're not going to get an emoji that you want. Um, so to answer your question, no, and a lot of it has to do with the fact that you need a background in hardware. You need to understand the landscape in Shenzhen. Casey and I spent four months earlier this year in Shenzhen, China with a Hacks Hardware Accelerator program, really making sure we were designing for manufacturing from day one. You need to understand your community. We understand our girls. And you really want to have to build with them and for them. Great. Yeah. And can we see the quality of it? Absolutely. Please go up. Wow. Oh, this one? Okay. How's it look? Let's get, let's get some commentary sure. on, the, uh, on the nails. And do these have a polish on top? Great. Yes, it's a top coat, just oh, a traditional right. top coat. Can you use a different base coat? You can use a different base coat. It's a little bit like, um, okay. you know, if you print blue on red paper, yeah. it's not going to necessarily pop as much. So you That's can absolutely nice. use a different base coat. Mm -hmm. We just recommend white for uh, a great vibrant color. And how long will the polish last before it starts to degrade? Yeah, so it's really, we recommend using a top coat to obviously seal in the image, it's a couple of days. Cool. Um, should you choose to use shellac and not stickers. something recommended in our kit, it'll actually last a lot longer. You print stickers. Okay. Do, you, do you have defensible IP? Uh, yeah. Is there, do you have a patent on the process? or the materials involved or any of it? Yeah, we absolutely do on our entire roadmap of our, our Nailbot product family. So the device that you saw that was, you know, it's, it's actually called TESS, and it automates the entire polish change. We control that consumable. It's a one-time use applicator, so we're not actually using a polish bottle, but instead of a one-time use applicator with traditional nail polish. And another iteration of one of our printers that you can see online on our YouTube channel, we actually use, in case you can grab it, um, we use the touch screen of the phone for finger tracking, and it's a very clever application. So we use the front-facing camera. It's shaped like a jewelry box. You put, place, insert your phone here. We, you uh, place your finger. On your phone, we take a picture using the front-facing camera. There's a mirror up top, and you swipe to print. This version is not motorized. It's much better for children. Right? There's no moving parts. Our girls told us they don't want to wait two years. So we created a solution yeah. that you saw today that is motorized. 
That does work. So to answer your question, yes. Many elements of the device have been patented, both utility uh, and design. I'm kind of curious. When you mentioned the, the market, I think, is 15 billion, I'm guessing a lot of that market is older women in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. If you had to figure out faster how to go after the ex existing larger addressable market of maybe it's, I thought the sports fans, like logos before games, just like, you know, Troy's shoe, it's like wearing, you know, colored sneakers or something, right? Or grandmas with their grandchildren. How would you think about going after that demographic? Sure. That demographic tends to like a little bit more of a professional experience. And we can certainly offer sports teams logos, you know, great of fun events, breast cancer awareness, you know, things that are more philanthropic. Um, I, I think a lot of the nail wrap companies have tried to do that, you know, with mommy parties, things like that. And that's one avenue. But we have a road product roadmap to get to a device that will paint your entire fingernail using a one-time use ampule. It's just going to take a little bit of capital and some time to really build that up. But we've always planned, that's always been the vision. And even on our advisory and investor team, Helen Greiner uh, recently invested. She's a co-founder of iRobot. This device can be built. We have early working prototypes. It's just going to take some time for you to be happy with that experience. Girls like to play. You know, we. The irony is, you know, a millennial girl tends to be actually a little bit more fickle with her time. But we've learned that our 13-year-olds, they love the device. They want to just use it for hours. Got it. OK, thanks. Yeah. So judges, are, what are your uh, primary concerns here? Is there anything that maybe we haven't touched on that you're a little worried about or getting some quizzical expression? I think the, it, it's comforting to hear that you have a roadmap to get to the full nail, because sort of one of my observations is the, you know, your fingernails are obviously relatively small, and you want it to pop to have that impression. And so if you need to look closely and you're only using about half the area that's available, I, I, you, you know, you, you, you're short of what I think you can accomplish. One thing to remember is that our target segment for our first nail bot has much smaller fingernails. So okay, uh, and they, they do. So actually, <laughs> these on. images, we've had to size them smaller. We have large <laughs> and small options. Yeah. Casey and I use the large ones. Um, but the girls, it does fill most of their nail. Uh, so depending upon the target segment you're talking about, um, you know, our offering actually works quite well with them. Okay. Yes, we understood to your point, and we, we are working to get there. Hmm. And you, you mentioned you uh, about the HP. Do you have a partnership with HP in any way? Using so that? we are utilizing Hewlett Packard Thermal Inject Technology, and we have been working um, with different departments for close to 11 months. Any Wait. last quick question? Yeah, is your manufacturing mostly based in the United States? I'm just having a hard time here. It's totally fine. Is your manufacturing based in the United States? So when we go to high volume manufacturing, we will likely be doing most of our manufacturing um, in Shenzhen and in Guangdong province. Um, and this is also why Casey and I spent a significant amount of time earlier this year, making sure that we could hit that price point that I've advertised um, before we actually went on Indiegogo. We don't want to wait two years to ship a product. Yeah. So we're out of time. Awesome demo. Well that was done. Madonna. Great presentation. Well done, you guys.